All right. So this weekend, I'm interested to talk about two interesting papers. One of them is the paper called uh, "Many Sparse Cuts via Higher Eigenvalues." It is written in 2011 by and Luis Prasad Raghavendra, Prasad Tetali, Santosh Vempala, and uh, and it is just another al- alternative to the talk that I've given in my previous lectures about uh, higher Chigar inequalities of researchers like James Lee and uh, uh, Shayan Oves Haran. So this is just this is very very similar to that article, but uh, this could be seen as an alternative, as the authors uh, suggested. And the idea is that, same as uh, before, that we had some uh, expansion and. Uh, Omega uh, S and uh, weights of S bar, and we know that uh, this is less than two root of lambda two. So the traditional Chigar inequality says that the minimum of this, the minimum of all of these S's, so the minimum of this, which is called phi of G, so phi of G is sandwiched between lambda 2 over 2 and 2 root of lambda 2. This is the classical Chigo inequality. And as a paper of Cheyenne and James suggested in the previous lectures, uh, they, they try to generalize it to higher eigenvalues and let's say higher Chigo inequalities. And they did that. But in this paper, they, uh, so the authors like Anand Lewis and Raghavendra, they, they created a new approach. As, as the algorithm is very similar. So let's uh, just say what are case sparse cuts. As, as you know, as you could imagine, that these are, if we want to find k disjoint subsets S1 through SK of V, such that now, because it is just, it is not two sets, S and S bar, it is S1, S2, SK, so there are multiple sets. So, so the natural thing that we can imagine is talking about the maximum of SI because if this is if this is minimized then we have a good way of clustering as well but notice that S1 through SK these uh, need not form a partition I mean some of them for example there could be some vertices that uh, do not belong to any of on any of the sets and so let's see if if we uh, so for example I will explain it later. And for example, uh, they want to prove in this paper that uh, for any integer that you say, for example, let's say k, that this is, it is between one and the uh, number of vertices. And for any k disjoint sets that you say, sk, uh, we could say that maximum of phi g of si is greater than lambda k over 2. And throughout the lecture, please assume that uh, lambda 1, lambda 2, and all of them lambda k. And we have at most the number of vertices. Uh, and the eigen, this is these are the eigenvalues of normalized Laplacian, and you remember that normalized Laplacian is just d minus a, which is normalized, and it has a great intuition because for any vector, 
V prime, you can write it as that energy squared. So this is the energy. So if you reduce this, then you reduce your cut. And so you know what uh, what is the meaning of these uh, these polynomials. So the main result of this paper is that it says that for any k that you say, there exists a ck, c is just less than 1, and uh, k is just the number of components, number of clusters that you have, but, but there are disjoints. So there are ck disjoint subsets, s1 through sck, that maximizes that Fg of Si. So the maximum of all of these expansions is bounded. This is this is great great capital C, not little c. And root of lambda k log k. So for lambda two, for example, we are talking about two just two sets. For lambda three, lambda three could bound the maximum of the expansion if you just uh, take for each two of them. And as you can imagine, for lambda 4, we have 3 and uh, we have 3 of them. And one is here. And uh, the expansion between two, any of them is bounded. The maximum of that is bounded by that uh, eigenvalue. For example, the force eigenvalue here. So it is very interesting things that eigenvalues, higher eigenvalues also uh, have many important meanings. So let's, uh, let's see what are the important things in this paper. First, they, have, uh, they want to say that uh, that, in, that inequality that I said, for example, maximum of phi g of si, less than c lambda k log k they they give a very interesting example in this paper that say that if you want to be this to be equality rather than inequality uh, this is this happens for a special kind of graph they call it uh, gaussian graphs it's a kind of infinite it's it's really an infinite graph and so, the, for example, the probability that two Gaussian vectors, x and y, uh, so this is the, the weight of your, because you need ad adjacency of this graph. So any u and v that you pick, for example, x and y, so that becomes the probability of x equal to x multiplying by probability of y equal to y. And this is the weight. And that is, uh, that is uh, when these becomes equality rather than inequality. Another important thing that I just want to review is that the classical sparse squad, there are two approaches. As you know, uh, if you use linear programming, we have a good, for general graph, of course, we have a good approximation. And if you have semi-definite programming, we have a better approximation. But in practice, we don't use it uh, for, for example, in order to uh, embed it into our k, we just very quickly project it into our k and eigenvalue approach is preferred in, sp uh, in spite of worst case approximation factor. So although you might get a worst case approximation factor, but it is preferred. Maybe because it is very quick, maybe because uh, it is uh, it is easily related to linear algebra, and everybody knows that. So the algorithm is just uh, in in just uh, four steps. The first step is just spectral projection. Yeah, as you know, you project it into, uh, uh, I mean, your eigenvectors. For example, top k. These are the top k eigenvectors of your normalized Laplacian. And so each of, the, each of these, for example, u1 and uh, un are, are just the rows. 
So V is equal to, for example, this is U1, U, U3 up to UN. And we have N vertices. So for N vertices, we just uh, represent it. Uh, so I can say that uh, the first step is like saying that we want to embed our our graph into our k so for so any vertex goes to our k for example vertex i goes to our k ui which is in our k so that's the intuition so we represent it like 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 the problem of zero extension we represent it or like the problem of just metric embedding. We, we embed it into RK and we represent every vertex by a vector. So this is just the first step. The second approach, the second step is that the randomized round, we pick K independent Gaussian vectors, G1, G2 through GK, from just the normal distribution, but it's just a vector of that. And we create this, uh, this interesting vector that h of uj prime for any vertex uj, it, this becomes, for example, if, uh, for example, everywhere is zero except the place that um, U, uj U and G I are maximum, and as you as, as you see in the paper, as you are following it in the paper, everywhere is is zero except one place. So this is a very good way to represent, uh, for example, this level. These are level sets. For example, this corresponds to S one, S two, and we pick the first uh, K k clusters so this belongs to that so this is a, a way just to represent because now uh, as i said you have a vertex uh, for each vertex you have a vector in our k and uh, uh, let me give you an example for example you pick the first three vertices and you want to embed it into r3 and you have embedded in that in so so I mean you want uh, to partition into S1, S2, and S3. So this is your graph. You want to partition partition it into three different clusters. So we uh, so we first pick the three vertices. For example, uh, this vertex is here. This is here. This is here. And uh, and uh, for the for the second round, for example, you pick another three vertices. So this is becomes here, this becomes here, and then you repeat it each time you pick three vertices. And and here you you say that okay, so these values, these are these are S1, so these belong to S2, and these belongs to S3. So we have uh so Using the just the magnitude of that u j and g g i, you can use this magnitude to just sort the values of them, and uh, and see uh, how to cluster that. But uh, so so you may ask, what are G these Gaussian uh, vectors playing? Uh, so the goal of that. The goal of just using those uh, Gaussian vectors is just because we want to concentrate our points on some cones, let's say. For example, I use exactly the same thing that Shayan uh, used in his nice paper. So here we have some vertices of your graph, but they are represented in, a, in, a, in R3, for example, because here K is 3. And these are points that are concentrated on this. These are points that are concentrated on this cone. And when I say concentrated, it means that the inner product, when, when, when the inner product is maximum, G and some vector, for example, this is a vector, the inner product of them, of them are, are maximum, it means that, uh, so it is concentrated around some, 
some vector. For example, let's say this is your random vector, random Gaussian vector, G1, and this is G2, and this is G3. So they cluster our, our, our vertices into just three clusters. And uh, so it's, it's like the concentration inequalities and those things that statisticians like, because we want something to be concentrated ar around the mean of that. For example, uh, Frecce mean, Frecce mean and Frecce variance is a way to uh, just use the, the, the mean from, in, uh, from the general space instead of just Euclidean space. So here, uh, we don't need to talk about those things like Frecce mean and, and Frecce variance, but uh, you can see that how this algorithm is so natural. So after projection, then you can just pick, pick you output all the subsets of expansion smaller than O uh, order of log K. So algorithmically, we are creating by construction, we are creating the sets that have expansion less than less than this. So you might think that what is the so what is the advantages of that because well, we are we are just algorithmically creating that. So uh, I can say that first you project into R K, and then and then you use uh, the concentration to see how vertices are concentrated, and using that concentration. Uh, you can cluster them. But these are bad points that if, for example, one point is here, the one, one vertex of an edge is here, and the other end of that is in the other cluster. For example, this is in S1, this is S2, so this is very bad. We want to avoid such such uh, points, so that's why the, the, the third and fourth a uh, step of this algorithm tries to pick. So it's another way to reduce uh, these bad edges. So it is a gain by construction. And, uh, uh, and I really enjoyed uh, under understanding this, this article because it, it is very uh, similar to the idea of Cheyenne and James and uh, I can say they are very, very similar to each other. But uh, this is written by different authors. And uh, so these are the things that I, want to, I wanted to say. But uh, in the next lecture, I will talk about Chigur type approximation for sparse cut. Uh, it, is a, it is an article in 2016 which is a generalization of an article uh, in 2013 by Luca uh, Trevisan. I think this guy is the CEO of Simon's Institute. He's an Italian uh, smart guy. And uh, in 2013, he wrote a very interesting article. The title was, Is Chigur Type Approximation Possible for Non-Uniform Sparsity Cut? And he used sparsity of, definition of sparsity of sparsest cut. I mean, the generalized sparsest cut that uses things like uh, demands and uh, capacities. And for example, Lucas said that uh, he uh, defined the sparsity, G, H, and S to be one over G of total, we have graph G, graph H. Graph H, graph H is, a, is something that the graph of demands. You go from S of U minus S of V, we want to increase them, but the capacities and the and the upside and the and denominator is g of u of v of uh, one s of u minus one s of v, and this is the work of uh, Trevisan, and he used it for uh, Chigur type approximation for that non-uniform sparse cut, and. Uh, 
But the article that I want to talk about in the next lecture is this 2016 paper written by two amazing scholars, as you know, Robert uh, Krathgamer, 